Hi there. I think it's uh, safe for us to start now, isn't it? It should be. It should be a safe time to start here. Um, for some of you uh, were with us uh, perhaps just about a year ago, you may have joined us for this virtual chat last year where we were talking about uh, health and wellness and so much more from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota. My name is John Hines, and I am happy to be back again doing this with a special guest once again. Um, and the neat thing for me is that now I am a full-blown Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota uh, uh, add-on for uh, all the retirement parts. Um, I've got A, and I've added B, C, D. I think that's all the letters there are, but and I'm in it. Anyway, we have a lot of questions to answer. I am uh, recently retired from radio. So as a matter of fact, just a quick note, uh, a personal note, for the first time ever, I broadcast during the state fair, but not from the state fair. So this is a sidebar note. But again, as I mentioned, joined by a special guest this morning, he is Dr. Mark Steffen. He's the medical officer at Blue Cross, who will be on hand to answer some questions because throughout this opportunity here, this, this day, you will have a chance to answer. We'll do some Q and A. You'll see the place where you can pose your questions. But uh, Dr. Stefan, thank you so much for making yourself available for us once again today. Uh, let's talk about things. How are you doing? Doing great, John, and it's great to be here with you. Um, as John said, I'm the Chief Medical Officer here at uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield in Minnesota. Um, I'm a lifelong uh, Minnesotan. I was uh, born and uh, raised in Southeast Minnesota, so it's uh, great to be with a group of friends. Yeah, well, it's great to have you back with us here. Um, and, and let's talk about this because, again, I want to remind you that you'll have uh, plenty of opportunity for Q&A, and we will go through as many of those. And if, if it should happen that we don't specifically answer your question, uh, fear not, because we'll, we'll get to as many as we can. But there's a lot of good news in that recent survey that many of you completed for Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, and it, 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 in particular, uh, a note for me was the fact that so many people in my age range and hopefully in your age range have uh, participated in getting vaccinated. Uh, and, and I just, I was one of those who just all of a sudden went, and ah, started to breathe easier. Um, and maybe I was jumping the gun a bit, looking at some of the variants and things, maybe I did. I'm still very careful, very cautious, but we'll talk about some of those cautions. Uh, and, and, and Dr. Stefan, are you hearing this, these similar reactions to people who have been vaccinated? Yeah, John, you know, I, I think you were breathing a sigh of relief because you should have been breathing a sigh of relief when you got the vaccine. You know, we know that it is the best protection against COVID-19, and that includes the variants uh, that are out there. And so, you know, I'm hearing a lot of people uh, who had relief, and, I, and I've got to commend uh, our senior population here in Minnesota. If you look at the data, 93% of our 65 plus population has gotten at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. This is nation leading and, and you know, it's not unusual for Minnesota to lead the nation. Now I'm biased, I, I, I was born and raised here and uh, uh, love the state, uh, but it, it, it very well is the best state to live in. Yeah, I, I could not agree uh, more wholeheartedly as a matter of fact. But you know, fu funny thing about this is, as we are seeing such a, a large percentage, 93 plus percent, uh, uh, not everybody, though, is breathing this sigh of relief. Some people are still playing with a lot of hesitancy, I guess would be the good way to say it, Dr. Mark Steffen. Yeah, John, you know, I, I think you know, th there's a couple things that are going on. You know, right now, uh, with the Delta variant, uh, we're certainly seeing the individuals who uh, have not been able to get vaccinated uh, really carry the burden of the disease. Uh, I think, unfortunately, we're also seeing some breakthrough infections. In other words, you know, people who have had the vaccine uh, still are getting uh, some COVID-19 infections 
infections. The fortunate thing is that, you know, even for those who have been vaccinated and still get COVID-19, they aren't experiencing uh, the serious and severe illness. They aren't the ones that are getting hospitalized. They aren't the ones uh, in general that are dying from the disease. So, you know, we continue to encourage everyone to catch up uh, to the Minnesota 65 plus uh, population and get out there and get their vaccine. Yeah, I saw this and, and you can straighten me out on this, but I think I saw a stat that said, you know, very recently, uh, hospital bed, for lack of a better term, occupation in Minnesota is as high as it was in April because of some breakthrough. But as you pointed out, Dr. Stefan, so many of those are uh, people who were unvaccinated, people who did not get the vaccine. And that's what we need. I, I guess, I don't know, I'm, I'm just here to encourage people to do it. And I know that not everybody can. Some people have some hesitancy for either medical reasons or other reasons, but it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea overall, is it? Yeah, I think that's right, uh, John. And I think the other important thing uh, to remember uh, is that not only are we in the midst of a COVID pandemic, but we have an upcoming flu season. Uh, so, you know, as you think about the COVID uh, uh, vaccine, uh, also remember that there's opportunity now to get out there and start getting uh, the flu vaccine like you do every year. Okay, I, I, I'd like to ask you this question, doctor, as we go forward, chatting with Dr. Mark Steffen, who is the chief medical officer for Blue Cross Blue Shield, as we are talking about uh, this, this, this webinar chat today. Has there been any, uh, been any indication about where these breakthrough uh, uh, infections are coming from? Are, are, are they part of the variant situation? What's going on there, doctor? Yeah, it, it's an interesting question, John, and, and some of this has to do with our uh, own immune systems. And, and I think of it as like, if, if you held up a piece of Swiss cheese uh, in front of you, uh, and you had a bunch of virus coming at you, most of that virus is gonna get caught by the cheese, but we all know Swiss cheese has a bunch of holes, right? And so there's virus that can get through those holes. Our immune systems aren't perfect. Uh, and and the, the vaccine can't uh, pr provide 100% protection, but it does a fantastic job. Uh, and then, you know, the other important point, John, is, is what we talked about. What these uh, vaccines are really great at is preventing those serious uh, illnesses and the hospitalizations, which is what we all want to avoid. Uh, you know, if we can moderate COVID-19 uh, infections uh, to be uh, less severe uh, illnesses, we're all gonna be in a better place. And to your earlier point on the hospital capacity, we, we know that our uh, hospital uh, workers have been stressed throughout the last 18 months of this pandemic. And the, anything that we can do uh, to help avoid continued stress on that system is great. Okay, I wanna make sure I make this clear again for anybody who is with us this morning. I'm so glad that you are because it's an opportunity to learn and perhaps get some of your specific questions answered. But uh, you can just feel free to ask the questions and we'll field as many as possible uh, as we work our way out after this chat. The, the cool thing was looking at this recent survey that was done by Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, is that people are still being cautious while the season permits and while things are good, we're still socializing largely outdoors. We are uh, still wearing masks indoors. Many, many people are. I mentioned this with Dr. Stefan, when you and I were chatting recently, I said, over the shift lever in my car, I have multiple masks there. So when I need to go into a store, especially if it's a store or location where they say masks are encouraged, I've always got one with me. And I think I'm not alone in that, but uh, it's still a good idea to be masking up, isn't it, on, a, on occasion when you're going indoors? Yeah, John, I think, you know, right now when what the CDC would recommend is that in areas of the country where there's high or substantial spread of the Delta variant, that people continue to mask in public indoor spaces. 
you know, the, the entire state of Minnesota is currently in a higher substantial uh, amount of spread in every county uh, in the state. Uh, so I'm encouraging everyone uh, as they go indoors uh, in public places that they do uh, mask up. And I think fortunately, John, right, I think we all have a bunch of uh, leftover masks that are, uh, you know, either on our shifter uh, in our car or, you know, hanging in the home or a box of the disposable uh, one. Uh, uh, sitting in the passenger seat. I want to ask you this question because, um, and we're going to trickle in as many of these questions as we can as we go through this webinar chat here this morning. But um, somebody is asking, is it too early to get the flu shot? You mentioned the flu vaccination earlier, Dr. Stephan, uh, chatting with Dr. Mark Stephan, the chief medical officer from Blue Cross Blue Shield. But is it too early to be getting that flu shot? Is the flu shot ready for us to be? Uh, uh, yeah, this is optimal time, Yeah, John. This is right in the window of when we want people to start getting their flu shots. And ideally, people would have uh, their flu shots certainly before the end uh, of October. Yeah, so I think any time uh, in the current period is a perfect time uh, to get a uh, vaccine. And, and I do see a, a question about, you know, is, is it good to wait as long as possible uh, to get the flu shot? And, you know, this is a balance. Uh, we, we know that flu season can occur um, uh, earlier uh, in the fall period, or it can even occur sometimes into the early spring. Uh, you know, it's, it's not good to try to time uh, the vaccine, but really get out there. It, it does offer good protection uh, throughout the flu season. So I'm always uh, encouraging people uh, to go get their flu vaccine, certainly as we get into the late part of September and early part of October. We're seeing that more and more seniors, and so many of them who have joined us this morning, uh, here, and I appreciate that. And many of you have participated in the survey, but um, many of you, and the survey I want to mention was wrapped up, I think, uh, uh, in, in just late August, so just not that long ago. But um, uh, is it encouraging or somewhat discouraging for you, Dr. Stefan, that people are um, just jumping back into uh, the activities that they were doing before we knew of a pandemic? Uh, or do you feel that it, it, for many people, it's safe to do so after being vaccinated? Yeah, John, I, I think this is one of those important things that you know we need to remember that uh, when you do get vaccinated, it does offer protection. Uh, and, and we should start really enjoying uh, those activities uh, that we were doing uh, pre-pandemic. And now we need to be careful. And, and right now with the Delta variant, you know, when you're indoors uh, in public places, it is important to mask. But also if you're outdoors, uh, you know, you, for most people, you do not need to mask uh, outdoors, uh, particularly if you're vaccinated and in areas where it's not a large uh, uh, crowd where you might be exposed to unvaccinated uh, people. Um, you know, we have a few months uh, here, hopefully, before um, the heavy snow starts falling and the frigid temperatures uh, set in. So I, I really encourage everybody to go enjoy our beautiful outdoors. The, the leaves and the trees are going to be changing colors uh, here soon. And it's absolutely one of my favorite times uh, in the state. And I think it's a great way uh, to interact um, uh, and, and get that time outdoors uh, before the cold sets in. A couple more questions as we go through this. And again, you'll find the Q&A opportunity uh, at the bottom of your, uh, your chat window here if you are joining us uh, for this Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota uh, get together. But um, uh, somebody suggests that they are traveling. Uh, they're traveling to Baja, California. They're both over 65. They're both vaccinated. Uh, they will be uh, traveling at the 8th month. So, okay, as we can go forward, because we're hearing about at what point we may need a booster. We'll talk some more about that coming up, but what about that booster uh, and how to decide about gathering indoors uh, with people who are non-vaccinated in this particular case? Yeah, yeah, John. I, I so when when we talk about indoor uh, uh, gatherings, uh, you know, I, I think 
a couple things. Uh, it's important to remember that when you're interacting with other vaccinated uh, individuals, uh, it, it's much safer. Uh, I think the big danger is for those that are unvaccinated uh, as they're the most likely uh, to get uh, the disease. And, and you know, as, as I look at the question about travel, you know, we generally get a lot of questions uh, about travel. We know travel can be a higher risk uh, activity. Um, it's safer uh, for those who are vaccinated. And there are some recommendations from the CDC that after people return from travel, one thing that they can do uh, to ensure that they didn't contract uh, COVID-19 is to get tested uh, three to five days after they return from uh, their travels and or get tested before uh, they travel. That way they know they aren't going to be spreading it while they're traveling uh, and can have knowledge about uh, their disease status uh, when, when they return. Um, and then lastly, you know, uh, masking when you're in those situations where you're going to be in close corridors and particularly uh, in public indoor uh, uh, places is essential. Okay, um, another question, and we're gonna get a lot of questions at this time of the year, because I don't know many people, especially uh, being a part of a family, uh, are making plans to gather for holidays uh, uh, as early as let's say Thanksgiving holiday or perhaps a Christmas holiday or, or uh, uh, um, uh, the, the, the Hanukkah, wh whatever it may be. Uh, and people are concerned or curious about whether or not it is safe to be in close quarters with, with other folks here. Uh, I mean, should we, are we right to check and see? Because last year, when you and I were chatting last year, Dr. Stefan, you know, it, it was like th these kind of gatherings were being completely discouraged. Uh, but now with, as you mentioned, 93% of Minnesotans in my age group have been uh, vaccinated. So is it, you know, is it is it more okay now? Or do we still need to exercise caution? Give me an overview, if you would. Yeah, so John, I absolutely still need to exercise caution. Um, I, I think this is one of the situations where it's fair game to check in with guests and ask uh, if they're vaccinated. Um, you know, for me, uh, having uh, people uh, who are unvaccinated certainly increases uh, the level of risk that I know I'm taking on uh, if they're coming into uh, my home. So I think that's number one, a really important consideration. Uh, number two is that you know, it, it also depends on how many households you're uh, bringing uh, in uh, together uh, all at the same time. As we increase uh, the number of households and you know, some families Families in uh, Minnesota can be quite large, uh, uh, and you bring together a huge number of households. But as you increase the number of households that are going to be interacting, uh, that risk of transmitting COVID uh, uh, also uh, increases. Um, we know that John indoors versus outdoors uh, is is uh, you know outdoors is absolutely much safer. But increasing even increasing air circulation in the house or getting outdoor air in. Uh, can be a way uh, that can help uh, reduce some of that risk of uh, transmission. So I, I think, you know, thinking through all of those factors and, and weighing those uh, is really important. Uh, let me get your take on this, because a couple of people have written uh, regarding, um, you know, they've had their vaccinations, but other family members have not. Uh, other family members have said, well, I've got antibodies. I had COVID earlier, or coronavirus, whatever it was, but there's still that risk there. And I read this recently, and I'm going to get your take on this to, uh, from a professional standpoint, because I know you read so much literature on these, these, these issues, Dr. Stefan, but um, uh, that if you put the vaccination on top of the antibodies that you have from maybe an earlier uh, infection, from the coronavirus, it makes you way much more secure. Did you see this article in, or am I just imagining that I read that? Yeah, John, so there was a study on the protection of, you know, quote unquote, natural immunity. So we hear a lot uh, of talk about natural immunity and that's when someone gets COVID-19 infection, their body mounts its own response uh, and then protects them into the future. 
uh, they looked at those individuals um, who, who had uh, infection and then recovered uh, and either did not get the immunization or did get the immunization. Uh, those that did get the immunization were much less likely to get COVID-19 again in the future. Um, we know that you know, just like with vaccines, uh, having had COVID-19 infection is, is not a 100% guarantee that you're going uh, not going to get it again. Uh, and certainly we encourage everyone, even those who have had infection or have had antibody tests uh, that were positive to go and get the vaccine if they haven't gotten the vaccine. Very good call, a very good call. You know, there's a lot of other interesting uh, uh, notes um, that, you know, go with the questionnaire a lot. And I'm sure you read some of the results. No, probably read all the results, Dr. Stefan. Chatting with Dr. Mark Stefan, the uh, uh, chief medical officer for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota. But um, uh, a lot of people said that they have adopted some, uh, for lack of a better term, permanent uh, health regimens that they're going to employ. I'm guessing that's always a good idea, right? I mean, whether it's wearing a mask in certain cases, washing your hands frequently and such, especially as we move into flu season now on top of everything else, it's just a good idea, right? I mean, people are sticking to this. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a really great point, John. You know, having some of those healthy lifestyle uh, habits is always uh, important. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you from my own uh, experience, uh, I have uh, two parents that are uh, Medicare age and they got out of their normal exercise uh, regimen when COVID first hit, right? The quarantine, uh, we're concerned about interacting really in, in many uh, spaces and they're just now starting to get back into those uh, activities. And, you know, really what, what I've encouraged people to do is, is think hard uh, about those uh, because we don't want to lose those healthy uh, lifestyle habits. And, and there's no time better than the present uh, to restart uh, those uh, activities. And particularly as you think about things like uh, exercise, if you're still concerned about going uh, um, to uh, indoor uh, spaces where you may have been used to uh, exercising, uh, like I said, this is a great time to go interact with the outdoors. And there's even great evidence that uh, being in uh, green spaces outdoors provides additional uh, physical and mental health uh, uh, benefits uh, when you do that on a regular basis. I mentioned this, the, the mental health part of it is a very key part, especially if we have been isolated or separated from, from others uh, who are close to us. But I mentioned this in a, in a blog that I shared with Blue Cross Blue Shield, that I swear uh, somebody, Dr. Stephan, snuck into my house and shrunk all of my clothes uh, when this, uh, uh, this pandemic first hit, because it's like, why did this fit the last time I wore it? But I think if you, if you go with sweatpants that long, you're going to find that. Say, um, we're finding too, though, and I don't know if this is uh, an anxiety thing or not, but a number of people, uh, particularly seniors, are not, are not satisfied with their health because they did get, as you said, Dr. Stebbin, off their regimen with their parents. Um, is it just a matter of, you know, just telling yourself, all right, time to get back to it or find a new routine? Yeah, listen, John, you know, I'm a, a, a big proponent of, uh, you know, doing things uh, in the present and, and uh, getting it started uh, right away. I, I think the best uh, course of action is to rip off that Band-Aid and get going. Um, I, so I, I'd, I'd encourage everybody to really think through uh, those healthy habits that they want to have. And to your point, John, it may be a new uh, uh, routine. You know, there's always uh, great times to pick up uh, new uh, hobbies uh, or uh, activities. And um, so, you know, I, I think if, as people have gotten more uh, and more uh, vaccine, you know, you can think about the ways that you can begin uh, interacting uh, again. 
And, and you know, I'll, I'll go back to, uh, as, as we think about the interactions that people uh, had, you know, there was a lot of talk about social uh, distancing when the pandemic first started. And I think it's important to emphasize, you know, even if we are practicing physical distancing, in other words, staying six feet apart so that we aren't going to spread uh, the virus, it doesn't mean that we have to socially distant. Uh, you know, we want to stay connected uh, to friends and loved ones, but let's do that uh, in those places that are most safe, outdoors, um, over uh, webinars, Zoom conferences, uh, those sorts of things. So, you know, my hope is, is that some of the technology uh, that people have uh, been interacting uh, with through the course of the pandemic, that it really enables people to have these wider, deeper uh, social uh, connections uh, that, that they have uh, more ways uh, to foster. Uh, because let's face it, uh, you know, we all face some type of quarantine during the winter months here in uh, Minnesota, just because it's too darn cold and there's too much snow. Uh, so we can employ those uh, techniques as uh, other things uh, set in to keep us inside. And recent Farmers Almanac said, colder, harsher winter this year. But I think they say that every year. Anyway, um, it's not exactly the harbinger of all things to come. I want to go back and rip off like four questions uh, that have come in while you and I have been chatting here. One was a concern, and this goes back to the whole uh, getting together during um, vacation times. Uh, or holiday get-togethers, I mean, uh, with children who are too young to be vaccinated. Uh, what, what, how do we keep that sort of a distance in that case? Yeah, and, and the, it's, it's a group of uh, big concern. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, the, the children under age 12 uh, don't have authorization to get the vaccine yet. Um, now, now, I'll emphasize yet, uh, we fully expect uh, that as they finish uh, some of the studies on the younger children that we'll see a COVID-19 uh, vaccine uh, for uh, kids in, in the relative near future. And, and a lot of uh, people and uh, even uh, Dr. Fauci have commented that they believe that that will come uh, here before the end of 2021. So that's a, a really hopeful a piece of information. I've got an eight-year-old uh, at home that uh, just went back to school, and I can't wait for the day when I can bring him in uh, to get his uh, first uh, vaccine. Um, you know, in those kids that are above uh, age two, they can mask and, and should mask. Uh, and I think that's another important uh, point that when they're outdoor in, in public spaces, uh, uh, that, that they can and do uh, wear a mask. And certainly my eight-year-old's going to school every day with the uh, uh, mask on. Um, so I, I think that's a great way uh, to provide uh, uh, protection. Okay, uh, next question. And I think just to, to, to clarify this for everybody, um, I, I think I know your answer, but uh, if we've been vaccinated, can we still spread the virus, Dr. Mark Steffen? Yeah, John, we, we can. And, and not only can we spread the virus, but we can get the virus. So as we talked uh, earlier, there are breakthrough infections. So, you know, fortunately, it prevents a lot of infections. But it's important to remember that even if you've been vaccinated and you get symptoms that are consistent with COVID-19, go in and get tested. Um, I, you know, it, it should not be something where you don't test anymore if you're starting to develop those COVID-19 um, uh, symptoms. Uh, so that, that's an important thing uh, to both remember and to uh, think about here in the future. Okay. Um, another question, uh, how soon, and this relates back to what you were saying, uh, Dr. Mark, about the um, uh, the, the flu vaccine, which we're coming into that season now, how soon after getting other vaccines or a vaccination for COVID-19, can we receive other vaccines? Yeah, and, and John, this is a, a, a really good question. Early on uh, in the pandemic and when the immunizations first came out, uh, they were less sure about if they should give COVID-19 vaccine with other vaccines. Uh, uh, for the most part now, uh, it appears safe to give both uh, COVID-19 Okay, let me talk to your doctor on 
Well, John, can you hear me no, again? You, now you're back. Thank you, Dr. Stefan. Um, so the, it, there are even some companies exploring uh, um, uh, two vaccines in one for the flu uh, and COVID that we may see in the future, but not in the near future. Okay. All right. Um, what other questions? Oh, here. Here's one. We're hearing about, you know, we've talked about the variants, the Delta variant and such, but now there's this mu variant. And I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of Greek alphabet left to go here. But um, uh, what do you know about this variant? And how serious is it? And, and how contagious is this one? Yeah, I, you know, so we expect viruses to mutate and create different variants. Uh, and, and so, you know, as the pandemic goes on, um, uh, we'll expect to see more of these Greek alphabet uh, variants uh, come into play. I think the important thing to know is that the Delta variant still is the predominant variant uh, of COVID-19 uh, in the country. Uh, it's really important to watch these new variants and understand um, how they may impact uh, COVID-19 uh, disease and or uh, the uh, vaccination. Uh, but right now, Delta remains the predominant variant. So those others are watch and monitor really closely. And the CDC uh, um, and our state uh, health departments, including the Minnesota Department of Health, do fantastic jobs in monitoring and keeping us updated on what's going on with these variants. Okay, I want to echo something that you said at the outset of our, our webinar chat here today, uh, as we were talking of regarding Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota for uh, so many seniors, of which I'm one, and I just recently have uh, uh, taken on all the, uh, the the various aspects of Blue Cross Blue Shield as I've kind of uh, run out the string on my uh, employee uh, insurance or employer insurance coverage. But, um, but you, you would mention this early, just uh, sort of uh, uh, throwing a shout out to so many seniors in Minnesota, 93 plus percent who have gotten the vaccination at least one dose it, in, in many, many cases, they've gotten their second dose, but there's something else that's that's important in you. I know you know about all about this being connected to Blue Cross Blue Shield, Dr. Stefan, uh, the annual wellness visit, which is not a bad idea at all, is it? Yeah, it's a great benefit, uh, John, and and you know it's one of those things uh, that I think is a um, secret that we don't want to be a secret. Uh, and so one of the great things that you can do uh, every year uh, as a uh, Medicare member is to get your annual uh, wellness uh, visit. Um, I certainly encourage uh, all seniors uh, to do that. Uh, it's one of the things I make sure that uh, my own parents uh, are doing uh, every year. Um, so fantastic benefit and, and really helps you keep on track and up to date with all of those fantastic preventive things that you can do to keep yourself healthy. Okay, you mentioned uh, this as well, uh, and we've been talking about this, that there are people who have been fully vaccinated who can still have a breakthrough with COVID-19, the Delta variant, whatever it is. What are some therapeutic things that we can do to uh, not only avoid, well, we, we talked about the avoidance, but to, to keep ourselves more well, or however you would say that, uh, during that time, if you've had a breakthrough in a situation like that? Yeah, yeah John, I, you know, unfortunately, there's not great um, outpatient treatments for COVID-19. In other words, I go into my doctor and I get a pill for COVID-19 uh, um, and, and it uh, cures me. Now, uh, there are things that are undergoing research uh, as we speak uh, that are in line uh, with that. There are some treatment options for people who uh, end up being uh, hospitalized, and those really need to be individualized. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, the the important thing to remember is that you know if you're sick with COVID nineteen, you want to do all of those great things uh, that help you when you're sick with uh, other uh, illnesses. You want to make sure you're drinking plenty of fluids, getting your rest, uh, and and those types of things, and then that you're monitoring your symptoms. 
Uh, if those symptoms are getting worse, you need to be in, in, in touch with your doctor to make sure that you aren't one of those people that are experiencing the serious illness uh, associated with COVID-19 uh, so that you can get in and get checked out right away. Okay, what are the symptoms? Uh, this question has come up now from a, a number of our, our followers this morning, uh, this, this day here uh, for Blue Cross Blue Shield, this webinar. What are the symptoms? How do we know? You also recommended though, if you've been in a situation, if you have the least concern, go ahead and get tested. But what are the likely symptoms of, let's say, the Delta variant? Yeah, so the Delta variant symptoms are exactly the same as sort of original COVID-19. So they include things like fevers, uh, like coughs, fatigue, body aches, muscle aches. Um, so it, it's, it's um, uh, uh, not dissimilar at all from the uh, what was the alpha strain uh, of uh, COVID-19. So you keep watching for those same symptoms. And if you develop symptoms, even if you've been vaccinated, uh, go out and get tested. Um, I, I, so, in, and I see another question here, uh, John, just to talk a little bit about getting the two uh, vaccines, because uh, I may have cut out. Yep. Um, they, they have found that getting the COVID vaccine with other vaccines, uh, for the most part, is perfectly safe. Uh, so, in other words, if you haven't had the flu vaccine, um, or you haven't had the COVID-19 vaccine, and you want to go in and get it now, um, it, it'd be perfectly fine to get that COVID-19 uh, vaccine with uh, something like a flu uh, vaccine, uh, as long as you don't have any uh, reason not to get either uh, uh, of those for other uh, medical reasons. Okay. Um, you And you mentioned this earlier, too, about uh, we, we talked boosters uh, just for a bit, and there are some people who are perhaps more uh, immunocompromised who probably will get boosters sooner or maybe a third dose, um, uh, including a, you know, a, a follower on our chat here uh, from someone who's had lupus uh, and they've had their third booster vaccine a month ago. Is there a way to, uh, to get tested? Can you test for the antibodies, Dr. Stefan? Yeah. How strong they are? Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll talk about a couple things here, John, because this is a really complex uh, topic. Um, the, for people who are severely immunocompromised, the FDA authorized a third dose uh, of the vaccine. Uh, and, and so those people who are severely immunocompromised are already able and should go and get the third dose of the vaccine. Um, uh, there isn't a good way to test uh, per se the immunity um, uh, or the strength of the immunity that we have because our, our bodies are such complex machines. Antibodies only tell us part of the story of how our immune system might respond uh, to a COVID-19 uh, vaccine. We have all sorts of different immune cells uh, in our bodies uh, that, that produce a, a response when an infection uh, or we get exposed uh, to the virus. Uh, and so there's no good way to test the strength uh, of the response. Uh, that we'll talk a little bit here about boosters, John, because I want to separate in people's mind the third dose of vaccine and the severely immunocompromised, uh, because what the intent of that was to make sure that those individuals actually got an immune response to begin with. Um, so that's not a booster. It's just saying they needed three shots to make sure that they actually mounted an immune response and that would protect them in the future from COVID-19. What a booster shot does is the booster shot boosts the original immune response that you had. So you know, we get uh, the um, uh, immunization, our immune response goes up, over time, it dips down, yeah, and it's variable as to how it dips depending on types of vaccine. Uh, but what a booster shot does is then it just bumps that immune response back up uh, so that it continues to provide protection. Um, right now, the FDA is uh, looking at the data around booster shots and the immune response, uh, and we're waiting for the FDA uh, to uh, provide guidance on when uh, the, the booster shots uh, 
should be had and for what group of people. And, and we expect this guidance to be coming out in the coming weeks. Uh, okay. And we'll certainly be communicating that through our blog. Well, I, yeah, because I've been hearing about this and, and if it was eight months down the road, my booster shot would be due in December. And I, I don't know uh, about that because I haven't heard about one um, uh, yet for, and I'm a Moderna uh, vaccinator, vax recipient. So um, uh, here's a one that says, I've delayed elective medical procedures in 2020 and wondered if I should be cautious about trying to schedule them this coming winter due to the Delta. For an example, a knee replacement surgery, which also requires uh, many therapy sessions to resume, uh, to resume uh, mobility uh, later on. Um, your thoughts on that, if you've been delaying in elective surgery? Yeah, John, I, I think, you know, what we've seen uh, in the country, and particularly in Minnesota, we have a fantastic uh, group of providers across this state that have taken extraordinary measures to ensure that people who are getting treated uh, for other conditions uh, are protected from getting COVID-19. Uh, so I, I think this is one of those that you really want to talk with your doctor about on the timing. Um, uh, I would reassure people that, you know, I feel safe. I have brought my children in to have their uh, annual physicals uh, with um, uh, their doctor uh, in person. Uh, and, you know, they, they do a fantastic job of making sure that people are vaccinated. They have all sorts of advanced cleaning protocols. Um, so I feel very safe. Uh, when I'm going in uh, to uh, a place of care based on what all of the great providers across the state have put in place to ensure we're protected. Okay, now here's one that you might not have the answer to, but I'm gonna ask you anyway, doctor, because you're the doctor. Um, a question about the previous COVID vaccines across the US have all been available free, but will the boosters involve a fee? Do we know that? And if so, what are you hearing? Will Medicare be a part of the coverage of those? Yeah, and, and John, we'll wait to see how the FDA um, uh, comes down on those uh, booster shots, uh, but we've committed to uh, ensure uh, that recommended uh, vaccines uh, are uh, covered under the preventive uh, uh, benefit, which, which doesn't uh, have copay. Now, to be considered a preventive benefit, we need the FDA to come out with their guidance, uh, and then there's actually a council on the CDC that reviews and then uh, reviews the FDA recommendation and puts out guidance that most uh, all physicians in the country uh, follow. So that's the American Council on Immunization Practices. Uh, okay. And that's who we really look for as the authority of what vaccines are actually uh, recommended. And then certainly CMS has to weigh in on, on the coverage uh, of those. So more to come uh, as we get understanding of uh, the boosters and how and if and for who they're recommended. Okay, uh, another question that's come up on a, on a couple of different fronts and it's been front and center in the news lately because of some uh, Questions, let's just say that. Uh, ivermectin, what do you know about ivermectin, Dr. Stefan? Um, the, yeah. The, it, it, John, here's, here's what I'll say to everybody. Be very, very, very careful. Um, uh, these medications are meant to be prescribed by physicians, uh, not to be taken uh, under um, uh, non-physician guidance. Uh, you know, they should be, uh, so either a person considering this or a family member, they should really be talking uh, with their uh, doctor. There's been a number uh, of uh, places uh, that have gone out with public health recommendations uh, to, uh, um, to combat what we've seen as a rise in people uh, taking uh, ivermectin and then having side effects from the ivermectin, which can be significant and very, very serious. And um, so, you know, this is one, talk to your doctor, talk to your doctor, do not put these things in your body unless you're prescribed them. Okay. Uh, I want to remind everybody too, before we run off the clock, and we're going to do that in just about a minute or so here, um, that if you visit bluecrossmn.com Blue slash seniors, um, 
There's so much more information there. Uh, and you can pick up on any part of this uh, webinar that you may have missed. It won't be up right away, but you'll be able to get to that. Uh, there's questionnaires that you can participate in uh, about concerns about COVID-19 variants, uh, questions about following various health goals. What are you inspired to do? What do you think Minnesotans may have learned from navigating during this pandemic? I think we're doing pretty darn good here, Dr. Stefan, chatting with Dr. Mark Stefan, the Chief Medical Officer for Blue Cross Blue Shield. But from what I hear, from what I read, I think we're doing pretty darned okay. Yeah, John, so uh, just maybe a few things before we part ways. Um, uh, for people who haven't uh, been vaccinated or have family members who haven't been vaccinated for COVID-19, go out there and get it done. Um, as you, uh, uh, as we enter uh, uh, winter here, make sure you remember the flu vaccine is still a thing uh, and we should absolutely uh, get it this year. Uh, and we've got a few months left to fall. So make sure you get outside and enjoy uh, that time in the great state of Minnesota. Been very good information throughout this morning. I have gotten a lot out of it. I hope I haven't uh, I hope others have as well. well. We'll just let it go at that. Dr. Stefan, thank you so much for joining us here uh, on this day for this webinar chat for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota. Expect more to come. And again, bluecrossmn.com slash senior for more information. As I mentioned at the outset, I'm very glad that I have recently taken on all of the Blue Cross Blue Shield parts uh, the, the B, C, and D that go with my A and everything else. Dr. Stefan, you have a great day. I look forward to chatting with you again soon. Hey, thanks so much, John. Really appreciate it. And if anybody didn't get their individual questions answered, make sure you talk to your doctor if they're important medical questions. Very good. Thanks, John. We'll sign off.